Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, and how to build strong family relationships through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to help a teenager be responsible. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what it's like to be a teenager and this whole concept of responsibility, how it plays in, and what not to do if you're trying to help them develop more responsibility and what to do. When you're a teenager, I think one of the most common things that you might hear from parents is, oh, it's your responsibility, or you need to be responsible, or something like that. In fact, I think there are many teenagers that get really tired of that type of conversation. And there are even some that have been pushing against it in recent years, saying, you know what, I don't want to take any personal responsibility. I don't want to drive. I don't want to date. I don't want to get a job. I don't want to move on. And so we're having a problem in our society where there's even a lot of teens and coming into young adults who are not even wanting to launch. They don't even want to be adults. So this is why the adults are so worried about the teens learning responsibility because they're like, no, you've got to launch. You've got to get out there and become an adult and it's okay. But they're seeing a lot of the teens being afraid and maybe even being lazy, okay? Big time laziness, not wanting to take those next steps toward adulthood that all involve responsibility. Now, when you take personal responsibility, this also means that you're going to fail sometimes. And I think we've created a paradigm in the minds of some of our young people that actually um, has been teaching that it's not okay if you fail. You better not fail. You better become an instant success, the next YouTube phenomenon. You better become you know, the next icon in this or this. And if not, well, then you're nothing. If you don't get enough popularity or enough attention, then you're nothing. And they also don't wanna wait. So if things have been very easy in our society for young people. When I say easy, I don't mean in all ways, because in some ways I would say definitely morally, um, when it comes to character development, when it comes to relationships, relationship development and stuff like that has been very difficult for them and to try to sort out what's right, wrong, good, bad, true, false couldn't be a messier time in history. But when it comes to like, oh, shopping, I'm just going to go online and get something. I don't have to talk to anybody about anything. I can just text. I don't have to communicate. I don't have to. So this very kind of lazy, easy way of going about life, which then creates a lot of entitlement for the young people. They don't even know if they have entitlement. People keep saying they do, but they don't think it's entitlement because it's just regular life. And so then they're wondering while, why everybody's so worried about their future and acting like there's some big problem. And it's because with this increased entitlement, a lot of the adult people are noticing that the young adults and the teens are not wanting to take responsibility and are falling into this, well, I deserve, well, I don't want to get a job in fast food. I've got to have something else that's more prestigious and so they're turning their nose up at just basic work, which is actually one of the number one ingredients in the American dream is to work hard. You work hard, you can become whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter if you start with nothing, but they're actually not okay starting with nothing. And so then they're having a struggle. So this is where we, we're at. We've got adults who are worried. They're trying to help move the youth along. Adults have always tried to teach teens to be responsible. That's a normal part of life. But the thing is, is it's not sticking as much now. And that's the part that's really making people struggle. So let's talk about what not to do and then what to do. But before we do that, click that subscribe button. There's a lot of great stuff on here that you're not gonna wanna miss that are gonna help you develop good, strong relationships with your teens and hey, children of any age, because everybody needs to learn about self-government. So click subscribe now. So what should we not do Number one, don't shame the children. Don't degrade your teen and tell them how they're not amounting to anything and start a power struggle. That does not help at all, especially if you have a strong-willed teenager, which a lot of people do have nowadays because we live in the time of what I say strong spirits, right? There's a lot of strong spirits right now who know that they have to stand up for something. Now, the problem is society is getting very confusing as far as what to stand 
for and not to stand for. So these strong spirits are just standing against parents oftentimes and any other authority figure because society's backing them up in that. You know, later they'll figure out that might not have been the best way and then they'll laugh it off. But in the end, parents are saying, okay, how do we get past that? We've got this strong-willed person who has a ton of potential but doesn't want to listen to a thing I say, doesn't want to take any personal responsibility over this thing and this thing. If you look very carefully, you will notice that most people will take responsibility over something, something that they care about. So it might not be school. They're like, eh, I don't care. I don't want to go. Or it might not be hygiene because maybe they really don't care because they never go see anybody or whatever it is. But there might be something that they care about and that will be there's something they take care of like a pet or maybe it might be a, a friend that they're always going to reach out to or something. They will take responsibility in areas where they care. So the whole idea is to help them get to a place of actual caring. This means they need vision. They need vision of where they're going going and what they need to accomplish or what they want to even accomplish. So number one, don't power struggle. That doesn't really work. Giving ultimatums can be slightly motivating sometimes and sometimes can be necessary. If you get a child who's like 17, 18, they're literally doing nothing with their life. You might have to say, Hey, listen, uh, we're, you know, we're going to have to turn off some of the things, the phones, the whatever, if, if you can't get moving on the adult life, because this is your phase. This is the role that you have right now in your life and you've got to get moving. I mean, sometimes you can say some things like that and it can be effective for a time, but for the long term for a person to care, no. So that's where you have to actually touch the heart and that's where vision is required. Another thing that you don't want to do, and this should be obvious, but just in case there's anybody wondering, and that is don't baby them. Okay. That's what's led a lot of times to the problem. There's this coddling where somebody always will bail them out and do something for them. And they haven't had the opportunity to fail and because they've been babied. And so the last thing you want to do is baby them. So that means what you do want to do then is give them the opportunity to fail. Now, the, here's the thing is sometimes if they don't step out of a comfort zone or won't take a risk, they also can't fail very easily. Although that is failure in and of itself, they don't necessarily see it as failure because they see it as keeping themselves protected. It's like the shy person who won't talk because they're technically trying to control all of their social outcomes. But in reality, they didn't get anywhere. They got stuck and that was, um, in the end, a failure, even though they you know, thought that they were being in control before they ended up losing control of their destiny, really. So they have to see a bigger picture and sometimes you have to help them develop that bigger picture. So what I would do in this circumstance to help my child develop a bigger picture is I would have a special meeting with them. I call these parent counseling sessions and I talk about how to have a really good parent counseling session in my TSG parenting course or in my book, Parenting a House United. So you can look for more information there, but this is a one-on-one -on -one meeting. that's just about one topic. It's not about everything under the sun. It's not about the chores and the job and the, the phone and the everything. It's about one topic. So I would have a parent counseling session and the topic in my mind would be vision for the future. That would be the topic that I would start with. And I would say, okay, so, and maybe we're on a drive. Maybe we go out to lunch. Maybe, you know, we're sitting out on the back patio. I don't know what we're doing. And I say, you know, I've been thinking about your life and, and your plans for your life. What do you hope that your life is like if you're going to be successful? What do you hope that it would look like? And then see what they have to say. Well, I mean, I want to make a lot of money. Okay, that's good. That's one thing. Well, I, I, you know, I want to have a family or maybe they don't. I mean, the big shocker would say, I want to live in your basement and play video games for the rest of my life until you die and then gather your inheritance. Well, then, you know, if they have been thinking ahead. That's not very productive, right? So hopefully you don't get that one. Um, but usually they're going to tell you something that they want with their life. Most people do want something unless they're in total depression, in which case you're going to want to help them out with that. Then you would say, okay, well, those are really good things that you're wanting. So what we need to do is figure out how to help you take steps toward those things, you know, and when I see our relationship, when I see your life, this is what I see. So you maybe, you know, push out a little picture there and say, so now let's start taking, let's backstep it. Let's start taking steps for where you could be going with your life. And then you can say, well, if you're going to make a lot of money, then we got to figure out what you're going to do. Like, how are you going to get this money? 
uh, is it going to be a, a job of some sort? Are you going to own your own business or are you going to work for somebody else? And if so, what's it going to be? And what would have to come before that? And then before that, and then before that, right? So you start making these steps to help them work toward their goals. And so then based on that bigger picture of what they have for themselves, that vision for themselves, then in your weekly meetings that we talk about how to do in my teaching self-government course, um, then you'll start having, you'll make small goals, little goals that help baby step toward that bigger vision. So you can help move them forward. Are they going to fall sometimes? Yes, that's the nature of a goal. But still, um, talking about a goal is better than not talking about a goal, and it, regardless of if a person actually accomplishes the goal or not. Talking about it is at least one powerful step in the right direction. So you're gonna have regular meetings, you're gonna follow up with the person and help them take some of those little baby steps along. And this is gonna help them feel like they have some sort of a support system. Now, some people don't wanna take any of those baby steps. You need to be aware of that. And that's when at the point, there might come a point where you have to say, listen, we have to have a timeline for some of these things. And there's gonna actually be a deadline and might even be some negative consequences if things don't happen according to the deadline, because that is, really important. They have to learn that part of becoming an adult is stepping out of their comfort zone and they learn to do this when they're in their teen years. And if they're able to just stay in your house and play on a game console and only see friends online or whatever it is and just text people and not have to be with people for all of these years of their life, then they've missed that opportunity to launch into adulthood. And they're going to probably be having some pretty hard knocks because of that later on. So it is important to try and help them set set some of those little baby steps. So one thing is keep a hopeful attitude. That's one thing you're definitely going to want to do just because they're struggling with some of their things with responsibility. That doesn't mean they're going to struggle with everything. Maybe they'll do good at managing their money, but they won't do good at, you know, getting their chores done, or maybe it could be just vice versa. Um, so there are certain key things that you can do to help a teen develop responsibility. And one of those things is to really build up to some of those rites of passage. So driving a car, that's one of those rites of passage that we really need to motivate our, our teens to do, to want to do because that is going to help them want to take responsibility. That's a big responsibility right there. Um, and then there's the gas that comes with it and the insurance that comes with it and all the things. And maybe you're going to pay the insurance, but still then they have to pay the gas or at least talk to you about the gas or, you know, whatever it is, however you work out those types of things. I really tried to give my children the greatest possibility to uh, self-sustain as early as possible. When it comes to money and speaking of as early as possible, and by the way, I have a whole video on this on my channel. Um, so you can definitely look that up. I look a little different. I was more chubby back then before I lost a lot of weight, but you'll be able to see that that was um, all about how to help children manage money. So definitely look that up. When my children are age 12, I give them the opportunity to pay for all of their own clothing and any other special things like souvenirs when we go places or gifts for people that they want to buy gifts for. Or if they want to like, oh, I want to go to Lagoon with my friends or whatever, they can pay for it. And that means they have to also start then figuring out how to earn the money. And I talk about how, what options we give them and, and how to help them get down that track. But earning money and budgeting your money and having a responsibility to pay for certain things with your money, this is something that also gets a person going. So that's another one of those rite of passages, things you help a person get a job and inspire them to get a job because that's going to help them become a really productive adult. You also help nurture relationships with other people. So a relationship with a pet, relationship with siblings, relationship with friends, maybe even girlfriends and boyfriends as they get to that age. But you would nurture those things so that they can learn how to be responsible in a relationship so that they can go through some of those bumpy patches so that later they can have good relationships. So, you know, when they're in their teens, they mess up all all kinds of things in the relationships. I mean, we see it happen left and right, right? But that's what it's about being a teen. You learn those kinds of things and then you take that personal responsibility. Time management is probably the beast. That's the one that nobody wants. Uh, the parents are so sick of talking about it and nagging about it. And the teens are so sick of hearing about it because they just feel tired all the time because they're going through puberty and they've got all the hormones flowing and all the different things. But in the end, um, that time management, if they can decide to take control of that and you can give some 
them some keys for how to do time management, then they'll be successful. And I actually have a whole series of videos on this channel about time management for teaching your children time management and teaching yourself time management. And both of those things would be very helpful for helping your teens learn time management so that they can take responsibility of their time as well. As you see, there are so many things that we could talk about of what to do, what not to do. One of the key things that you can do is teach your teen how to analyze themselves, how to see what's calm and what's not calm in their behavior and in their thoughts, how to communicate better with other people. This teaches them responsibility over their actions, thoughts, emotions, all those kinds of things that really can be empowering for them for the future. There are so many things I could talk about related to that topic because that topic is central to learning how to govern yourself, which is what me and this channel is all about. Be sure to go to another video after this. This is a full length class. It's all about self-government, different skills and stuff that you might need and could be very beneficial to teach your teenager. That class is called the not so known secret for parenting success. So please go to the not so known secret for parenting success today and get on the track to self-government, responsibility, and good communication. We'll see you there.